this opening leg of the bike parts. Runners sent on their way from the 1200. Neville Settle once again a little bit sluggish out the gate but makes for that inside running rail. First one to go, Roy's Gulgula lighting the fires right there with the white cap. Tani's on the right hand side. Roy's Marciano is near the rail with the green sleeves and then comes Joshua's answer. Celtic captain's on the outside. Never Settle goes through along the inside running rail with the yellow cap about four and a half lengths off the leader. Now followed by Silver Green. Further back, Venetio and British Anthems, the trailer, about seven lengths from top to tail. 600 to go, Royce Gugula, the leader, Tani a second, and lighting the fire, white cap on the outside. Down the inside, Royce Marciano, and then comes Never Settle, who's going through down the inside. Celtic captain is towards the outside. Royce Gugula is still the leader at the 300, and Never Settle's throwing out a challenge. Celtic captain's on the outside, lighting the fires, trying to get back into the race. Never Settle is starting to come forward now, lighting the fire, is running on. Royce Gugula on the outside, but Never Never Settle will win it, and Never Settle will win it. Second place will perhaps go to Lighting the Fire. It's close for third, Celtic captain or Royce Gugula. And victory is for number five, Never Settle. Once again, did not get the best of breaks as in the debut. But Anthony, you didn't panic on the son of Western Winter. He goes through down the inside. There you'll take notice, the seal of approval. He's happy with that victory. He puts his hands down. They win by about a length and three quarters. Second, I went with Lighting the Fire. That's number four. Lighting the Fire will just make it home. Roy Skulgula, I think, makes the third position. And then Celtic captain back in that fourth. Roy's Marciano. Further back is Joshua's answer as we continue to run it. They were followed by British Anthem. And then came Silver Green and Tani. And further back in the running, Benicio. So that's the opening leg of the bipod. The winner's on the extreme left-hand side, and that's never settled. Only second time at the track reverts to the shorter trip of 1,200 today. You'll see still no stick required, just a few flicks down the neck, and never settle goes on. Roy Gulgula lighting the fire. Seemed to just drop out of it a couple of lengths off them at the 300 and then stays on, just giving the indication that he, uh, he's also going to prefer more ground, but victory is for Never Settle. So number five ends up the toad favourite at 1 Rand 80. Until the running of our second race, that starts off our place accumulator. Back to the studio. A oh, nice favourable start for the backers of the top one here in race number one. Number five, Never Settle from the Dean Canemayer stable has come through to open up the meeting with jockey Anthony Dalpesh. Owners, Kaya stables, of course, massive supporters of Dean and the breeders, Fast Fantine Stud. And uh, firstly, let's have a chat with uh, trainer Dean Canemayer. And I uh, remember chatting to you after the race first time out and uh, you were disappointed, Dean. Um, I was actually devastated um, when, he, when he got beat first time out, you know, but um, horses do get beat first time out in the machine, uh, you know, he, he, he's normally quick at the machine back home and uh, when he got left, uh, you know, it's very difficult for Baby to make it up and he was all over the place, so today, um, you know, as Anthony also said, all he has to do is bring his work to the track, you know, the race course and, um, and he did that today, he's a, he's a horse that I think has got lots of potential. And uh, he was still a bit sluggish coming at the machine, but uh, he quickened up well. Anthony will tell you more about that. So well done to Lady Laidlaw, Kaya Stables, he was, uh, and, and to Fastfontaine, Fastfontaine started breeding. And Western Winter, you know, I've trained some lovely Western Winter horses, and, uh, but he's, he's a lovely, lovely colt. And, um, uh, you know, we, we bought him the two-year-old sale last year, Jean Malaba from Bloodstock. We saw him with it. It was a magnificent horse, and he was, uh, as I've always said, a little stretchy bit to get him. But um, uh, I think Lady Laidlaw is going to have a lot of fun with this colt. You know, I don't know what the plan it is. I'm sure you'll discuss it with the owners. But will we see him again during the season? Uh, we'll, we'll definitely see him here again. And um, it just was most important just get him in the winner's box, you know, because it was, took the wind out of my sails, as I said last time. And, uh, but that's the racing. That's how it goes. Fantastic. Before you leave us, Dean, you've got two more runners, Valo and uh, Captain Great. Yeah, Valo, um, he ran a good race last in the poly. Uh, he's well-drawn. 
sales, maybe a little quick side for anybody who's doing well. And Captain Great, you know, we're trying him on the poly. Um, uh, you know, he's, he's had a few new issues, and I've spoken to Fred Krabby about it, and we can try him on the poly. Probably maybe a little more comfortable with a 12 and a bit of trip, uh, but uh, both horses are fitting well. Before you leave for, your, for the followers of Power King, uh, uh, you must have been really impressed with his uh, run in the 1900 from the position he came. Yeah, I, I thought it was a great run, and, and he was a rather unlucky horse. Uh, when, he swung firm, he was, when he swung firm, he was about two lengths behind the second last horse, and I thought, well, you know, things are going wrong here. And it was a rough race, yes. and uh, it just all went wrong for him from the time he left the starting stalls, but he made up tremendous ground. And he was giving away to her. You know, don't take it away from the winner, but he was, I'd met him before in the derby. I'd beaten him before and he beat me in the derby, but level weights this time I gave him four kilos, so I thought it was a, it was a tremendous run. And uh, Ravette reports was that he was a little stressed after the race, but uh, he's actually fine after eating well. And, uh, and I think that, um, you know, I'm aiming him towards the July, and I, I feel that he's done enough to, I'll hopefully that they, uh, they accept him in the July because that was really a great run. Thanks, Dean. All the best for the rest of the afternoon. Yeah, Dean, thank you very much. Thank you. Well done to trainer Dean Kanamea. Bonji, the floor is yours. You know, as Dean mentioned, gutted that the source uh, didn't bring his homework to the track on debut. Yeah, we, we went back scratching our heads. We couldn't, we couldn't believe he could run that bad. I mean, I said to Dean the first time, if he gets left, doesn't really matter. He, he's just showing us work at home. It's scary. And uh, today I came, I was nervous, to be honest, and I shouldn't be. Um, uh, and I just said to Dean, just want him to just show us his homework. And luckily, he came out slow again, and, but he... He showed us his homework at home. He, he, he's got ability to source. He's a real nice source. You gave him a confident ride. You know, I watched that head on. You didn't pull out the stick. You just rode him vigorously with the hands. Yeah, I always knew he was going to get there. I, I could see a long way out he was going to get there. So no good hitting them if, if you know you're going to win the race, especially their young horses. Like them to come back, have a good experience from the race. Dean touched on both the he's uh, that you ride, a great uh, ca Captain Great and Valo. And anything else that we can maybe add in this pick six from your, your side? Yeah, Captain Great's been a very disappointing horse. And I, I, we're coming back in trip, and I, I'm not too sure if it's the right thing. But you know what? We don't know where we're going, so we might as well do it, you know? And uh, Valo, five furlong might be a little bit sharp for him, but I, I go back and I saw that he won a five furlong. So. But I, I looked at that race, and I think that's the hardest race on the card today. Anything else? No, these, I, I've got uh, horses that, that's got chances, but I thought my best ride won today. Thanks for that. Well played. Thanks very much to Dean and his whole team and to my sponsor, Aventure. Thank you. Well done to Jockey Delpesh, teaming up with uh, Dean Kaname uh, in race number one. And uh, one would think uh, many uh, Bipod tickets in the play uh, with number five. Never settle. Five, four, six and two. That's your result, race number one. Coming up next will be the start of uh, this afternoon's place accumulator. Time to jot down 13.10. 10 past 1.